if you have been in the crypto space for some time, this one is huge. Yes, I know we've been in an ocean of red negative news, but right now this coming from the Bank of International Settlements does show green light. It does show a light at the end of the tunnel for sure, because they are right now talking about the priorities for 2023 to 2024. Now, this is the end of 2022. So here we go. Commercial banks across the world can now hold between 1% to 2% of their tier 1 capital in crypto. Do you remember when I actually talked about how banks can buy? And then you come back to this one where David Schwartz, you know, the guy who created this thing, talks about how he thinks things can work. They can take hold of this. The governments, like the hyper say, but XRP Ledger is a public one. People all over the globe trade it. So that is not possible. What is possible here, right now, is this. And why do you think this is huge news? Because right now, it's all about how much do they have. This is just for the US banks. Well, says the DeFi. Now, just consider the US banks assets under management right now is 21.7 trillion. Now, this is not that old. It's September 2022. So, some way close to this is where we are right now. 21 trillion dollars just for the banks in US. Then you go on and look like banks versus mutual funds versus insurance. So, do you actually think if banks are going to buy into crypto, mutual funds and insurance, pension funds, they won't? Already they are doing that. So the amount which they will put in to this space is going to be huge. And as you read through this, for me, it's like a huge thing because they actually give you the direct understanding. It's like they will look at group two crypto assets. They will look for group one crypto assets where you actually see that classification. So for one, one percentage of the tier one capital and should not exceed two percentage. But as for the other one, you can literally observe that they are talking about big money coming in. And this is just for one bank. This is just for one bank, right? Now you can look at China, India, all the other countries and say, okay, if the banks are going to do this, what do you really think all the other investment management is going to do? Because it's not just the banks. You have a lot more coming. Welcome to the Sinefic Investor family, where the normal retail guys learn how to become the next top 10 percentage. So when we talk about this, what a lot of people does not look for is how much is the total assets under management, the global one. And look at this, it's like $100 trillion. Now, why am I using 100? Because 2022 is not that good. Stocks are going down. Values are dropping, interest rates are going up. So assume it's close to 2020 range. Let's wipe out that trend trillion. Fine. Still, you get a trillion dollars just from the banks. A trillion dollar, which is the one percentage. If it's two percentage, which they are opting on to, two trillion dollar. Now come back to the crypto market. It's right now valid at 800 billion. So what do you think will happen when that new two trillion dollars comes into the market? Because this is 800 billion for like 20,000 assets. And they are not going to buy all the 20,000 assets. They can only buy into assets which has liquidity, fundamentals for sure, because they are traditional banks. They have standard classification of what to do, when to do, you know, which asset to actually buy in. So they do look for utility for sure. That being said, yes, Short-term price movements are not actually great. We've talked about different scenarios. And right now, if you look at that, that is playing out. We are dropping slowly to the downside. And don't be surprised. This is a short-term price volatility we've been talking here. Maybe 7 days, 10 days, we talked about the scenario of price going back lower. Now, I do even think like, okay, we may have a wick to the downside close to 0 0.3, 0 0.31, that range. So don't be actually surprised. Now, that's actually a short-term volatility because right now when you see 
positive news coming in from all over the space, understand how things are going to evolve. If this RSI is going to drop back down and then bounce, your MACD at that time, now this is speculation, okay? The MACD is going to bounce to the downside and then go back up and cross, which we have seen many times historically. You can see this. It tried to cross to the downside, but then it got bounced to the other side. Eventually, it crossed back up. Now, inside this trend, yes, there was some upside, but it was not huge. But why do we think like this time it can be even better? Because considering what we have seen through these days, here we are making a clear support trend line, which is rising. One thing. Second, on a macro higher time frame structure, which is a weekly, you get to see that the asset right now is showing you that it broke higher, it's retesting and it's in the retest phase. So yes, you will see volatility for sure. Right now you're at 0.33, you may drop another 10 percentage to come close to 0.3. That can happen. Look at the MACD, it suggests I can cross to the downside. If that bounce to the upside, that can be a surprise move to the upside, which is positive, fine. But then you actually go on a four hour chart to see what the market shows you with all these noise. And you're like, okay, fine, I'm looking at this, this is the bottom and that support has to stand. If you break that level, now you're zooming out to see, does that level look any stronger? And it's like, okay, yes, you do see a lot of buy, sell happening at that range. That's the only reason why from all these time, like a year, the market is bouncing from that support. So when it actually come back down there, what do you think all these bots, algorithms, you know, the high frequency trading bots are going to do? They buy at a support. So if you are here in the market and you're like, my backs are packed, I'm not looking to buy more, it's completely fine. But the issue is you may have to hold through these volatility. Now, why do I say that? Because when you go look at Bitcoin, it kind of, you know, moves the market. I agree with that perspective. Then you see, okay, we are creating a bullish divergence, which has not yet played out bullish, agree, 100%. But then you look at this and you're like, fine, fine, fine. I may need more patience. Why? As we talked through these days, we're going to hit the moving average. We're going to get rejected. And right now we are coming all the way back down to 15,300. Now that happened to be the recent bottom. It's close to 15,300. Great. Now on a three-day chart, you can actually notice that the MACD crossed to the upside, which is a positive thing. Mm -hmm. But the RSI is showing you a divergence with that MACD structure, but it actually follows the price structure It is putting in a lower high. So there is nothing weird in that because you can try to literally observe which indicator suits for this time. And right now you're seeing the price is dropping. The market can actually go back to 15,000. That does not dictate how long term movement of this asset is going to be because you actually seen this from a very long time people are looking for this and what do you think a news like this is going to impact because these are banks mutual funds insurers agreed great now think about the billionaires of the world think about the millionaires of the world if they see this news that the banks which they have money in is going to put one to two percentage of their assets inside this, what do you think the investment management firms like wealth management firms like Fidelity, Buck, you know, all these guys are going to do. That just makes a lot of sense. People are going to put money in this asset. Now, clearly, if we want to get a taste of that, we need to literally wait for another week or so to see how the market actually dictates these news. Because, you know, not all of us will watch that news right now. Not all of us will look through all these details. But yes, I agree. There are research analysts for a lot of these banks' research funds. Agreed. And that's where it actually... Now, these kind of data kind of help you. USDT inflows to exchanges is down 30%. So you can literally see how things are moving. Either you can say new money is not coming into the market much. Or you can say... Those who wanted to buy has already done that. So you go to the demand side of it. Great. 
Now we are looking at the total movement and it's like 30 percentage down. So the market is boring, 100 percentage. The psychology of the market is down. And that is where the real opportunity lies. If any one of you, me, who has actually followed all these legendary investors, they will actually give you the idea. They will say, okay, I think this is going to happen. And that's why when you come look at Bitcoin, inflows to exchange is down 40 percentage. So you are not actually observing people moving Bitcoin to exchange to cash out, right? Then you look like, okay, how much of it is held on the exchanges? It's down 4 percentage, not huge, but still a little bit lower. Why is that? We have seen recent FUD, FIA, you know, with the Binance issue being ignited, reignited, I would say. That kind of, you know, pushes people around and messes with your mind. Thinking like, okay, should I move it to a wallet? Should I move it to my ledger? It's completely fine. Hold your assets. Hold your assets. That's 100% true for any crypto asset if you have a proper wallet to hold that. Now, BTC flows to a fiat exchange is down 56%. But again, BTC to crypto exchange is also down 40%, which means people are not moving out of BTC right now. It's reducing either to a fiat or to a crypto asset. Then you come back to the Bitcoin chart and I'm like, okay, mm, that does make some sense. If it actually drops here and they don't still want to move out of this asset, they do believe that this pattern is eventually going to break to the upside. Now, notice the word we use here, eventually, because we don't know whether it's going to actually run this pattern for some time, coming down here, go up, come back down, go up. Whether we break higher or not, this pattern needs to be broken. 100% insure. So the level of patience which you will need here in this market is going to be hard. Just one thing as we talk through this is that these are big money. If you remember what Brad Garling has talked before, that's what we are here for. The repositories of value is going to come in. Imagine they put in a percentage or two and they just see 5, 10x. So their two percentage now become 10 percentage or 20 percentage. What do you think their shareholders or investors will say to them? They will now pressurize the regulators to say, mm, not just one or two percentage, let's go up to five percentage. Let's go up to 15 percentage. Because if you look at their structure, they'll actually look for equity, mm -hmm. fixed income, great. Then the alternative assets, including gold, you know, real estate, you know, all of those. And they actually think like they can do 15 percentage. So now there will be an option. Now that's just my thought process, speculation. In that 15 percentage, you can put whatever you want in crypto, maybe 5 percentage, maybe 7 percentage. And that is going to come because for sure, if they put a percentage and that becomes 10 percentage, which is way bigger than the alternative assets, it does make sense to put in a bit more because they know that this market cycle is changing. It's going to go back up. Now, why do I say that? I'll take you directly to the altcoin market. And as we look at the altcoin market, you will notice on a weekly, now not a short term chart, on a weekly, it does mean a candle is a week and you need a ton more patience. Fine. On a weekly, you do note that this support is there and the RSI suggests to you that support should be broken to the upside. Now, MACD need to bounce here, giving us more validity, saying, yes, we are going to break to the upside. Now, if you are a trend line guy, you'll actually see like, okay, mm, we just broke that to the upside. Now, right now, mm -hmm, we are actually making this pattern. Now, you know, don't laugh. That's kind of a accumulation side of this. But the only concern which I have right now, being frank, the only concern is that this is one high, great. And the next one here happens to be a lower high. Then the next one come back to test that. That's a double top. Then the next one again puts in a lower high. So I'm like, okay, the structure does not actually look that great. So you may actually observe this coming back down and then going back up. Now, what does this mean? This now will give you that Wyckoff Spring event. So those leverage trades, which are going to kick out for sure, and the trailing stop losses and all the other, you know, speculative guys who are here with a heavy leverage is going to be wiped out. Then the long-term guys are going to make money because this is how the market usually works. To get an idea, you now look at this. You put in this 
after dropping in a lower high and then it goes all the way back down here the wick there is like kicking all these leverages out so that does mean you are going to most likely see things like this where a lot of leverages are going to be kicked out so if you are levered in this market keep this in mind the market always does this at the bottom or close to it so you don't want to actually miss out so guys if you are receiving value please do hit that like and subscribe button and if you have another 10 minutes please do visit this channel of mine and watch these videos and if you receive value from there please do hit the like and subscribe button there too i'll meet you guys on the next video Bye bye